love you more than anything, more than anything, and I will consecrate my life, oh, to you, Jesus, I love you more than anything. Worth more than anything. You worth every sacrifice. You worth every cost. So I bring myself.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone say praise the Lord. Praise God. Have your seats, everyone. Thank you, worship team. We appreciate you. Praise God. We're going to show a clip from last weekend of Naomi. Uh, someone, you've got pelvic imbalance, hip problems, that type of thing. What's the problem, Naomi? Hello. Um, I've got a wearing down of my left hip, which makes my knee um, one leg shorter than the other, and it makes my knee sore. You ready to be healed? Yes, I'm ready to be healed. Hey? Yes. You're ready to be healed. Yes, I am. That's the power of God. That's the power of Jesus Christ coming on you, Naomi. <laughs> That's the mighty power of Jesus Christ coming on you. It's coming on the left hip. The left hip is uh, growing. The left hip is growing. New bone is going in there in Jesus' mighty name. This is the power of Jesus Christ that I was preaching about that the church needs. Leg, do as you're told, and grow out in Jesus' name. This is what you call divine surgery. There's no anaesthetic here. This is divine surgery. They'll feel it all. My hip's good. Did you have a problem with your hip? Yeah, I did. It was worn down, cartilage worn down on the left hip. All right. Yeah. I believe your hip's been healed. Now, Lord, we, we pray for the right leg. Just be still. We pray yeah. for the right leg. And we command, Lord, the pain come out of the leg. We command, Lord, for a knee reconstruction right now in Jesus' name. That's the Lord changing the nature of your knee. Changing the nature of your knee. That's the power of Jesus Christ. Okay, bend your knee. Wow. Pain gone. That would normally hurt a lot. So, Naomi, let me explain what the Lord did. <laughs> okay. The Lord did surgery part one on your hip and then part two on your knee. Hallelujah. Praise so Jesus. So you had two you. surgeries, one after the other. Wow. I was a teenager and my legs collapsed underneath me on the way to school. I was walking to the traffic lights. Um, but it affected my right knee because um, I was placing weight on my right knee more than what I would normally because of the left hip, um, shortening the left side, which meant there was more weight on the right seat side, on the right knee. And so that caused me pain. I think it, it started causing pain. I was taking double steps upstairs. Stairs were difficult and um, painful. What did you experience when the power of Jesus Christ fell on you? Um, it was pretty amazing. It blew me back into the couch and um, it was just, I was shaking all over, squealing and making lots of noises and um, laughing, you know, and, yeah, it was all happening. <laughs> it was all happening. You yeah. know, sometimes people... All they do is they judge the outside, what they can see, and that is a foolish thing to do because Jesus said, do not judge by outward appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. And people can be critical of what's happening on the outside, not understanding the profound work that Jesus is doing in the person's life. After that experience, um you know, throughout the following day, I felt my knee, you know, it just was strong and there was no pain and I was going up and down the stairs testing it on my porch and I was just going up and down the stairs without a thought and I even hopped on a bicycle, which would be painful, especially going um, up an incline 
um, putting weight on the knee on a bicycle. And then one day I just rode it like a, a little girl. I just jumped on the bike and just started riding the bike. And there was no pain. Um, and it was just like I was, you know, well, 20 years younger or something, you know. Wow, praise so, God. So you want to uh, show us now how, how you can move the, the knee, the hip? That's my knee there. Yep. Um, working. And um, my hip. Wow, praise God. Praise God. What advice would you give to someone who's had possibly decades of problems, you know, arthritis, hip, knee, what, what would you suggest? Um, I would just say God hears all your prayers, um, even if you've forgotten about them. It's, it's gone to heaven and, and God knows. And just wait, wait for him because his timing is perfect and he will come and he will heal you. He will do it. And uh, just keep trusting him and thanking him. Hallelujah. Who healed you? Jesus healed me. <laughs> and, and what would you say to someone who's got a problem with people getting drunk in the spirit under the power of God? What, what advice would you give them, Naomi? I would say um, get over yourself. <laughs> and um, that's a common cliche that we have at Jim. But um, look, it looks weird. It looks strange. We accept the Holy Spirit, we trust the Holy Spirit, and we accept what he's doing. Isn't the Lord awesome? Yep. Amen. Lord, knock us over. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The title of the message is, I've got to think what it is now, <laughs> Trust in the Lord at all times. Trust in the Lord at all times. Trust is your connection with Jesus Christ. Trust is that divine connection between you and him. Trust is a leaning on God continually. I think it's easier to trust God when things are difficult than when things are easy. Think about it. I think it is easier to trust God when things are difficult than when it is easy. Because when things are difficult, it presses you into God. When things are easy, you have to remind yourself to press into him and trust him at all times. Amen. Trust in God is an intentional focus on Jesus Christ. It's a mental, spiritual focus on Him. When things happen, you're focused on the Lord. He is your trust. He is your rock. When pain comes, financial problems, marriage problems, you are trusting in him and he is your rock and your trust is unwavering. You're focused, focused. Everyone say focused. focused. Isaiah 26.3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Just chew on that for a moment. So some issue comes your way, but you have peace because your mind is stayed on him. You're focused. Turn to the person beside you and say, change your focus. Change your focus. You are looking beyond the circumstance to him who is eternal, invisible, almighty God. Your focus is on the invisible realm of Jesus Christ. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. 
For in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. People, you know, people who have no foundation in the Lord, they lack strength in the problems because their strength depends on their emotional reactions. Their strength depends on themselves. But people who put their trust in the Lord, their strength comes from somewhere else. Amen? Amen. So when you think about the Lord and your connection is trust, it runs through the word of God. You, you know, when, if, if you get a good report on a dentist and they say, oh, this person is really good, he pulled out my tooth, I didn't feel anything. You get a good report, you're more likely to trust him. As you read the word of God, you hear the report of the scriptures, you learn about him. Amen? And then you learn to trust him. When people starve themselves of the truth of the word of God, it's, it wrecks their faith. You learn about him and you learn through the word who he is, that he's faithful, he's true, he's the healer, he's the deliverer, he's the saviour of sins, he'll redeem you. You learn about him and you learn that you can trust him. So trust flows through the word of God. Ephesians 1.13 In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. You know, some people say, oh, why did God do this to me? And not realising that in truth what was happening to them was a demon was attacking them. But in their ignorance of the word of God, they say, why did God do this to me? Why did God give me this disease or that disease? Why did God cause someone to die? And this type of thing. And so they, they, you know, their trust in the Lord is undermined by these demonic thoughts. But if they would meditate on the word of God they would find that the Lord is good and you can trust him. Turn to your neighbour and say, the Lord is good and you can trust him. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. You are God's purchased possession if you put your, your faith into Jesus Christ to the praise of his glory. So you are intentionally trusting God, right? Your mental spiritual focus is on him. No matter what's going on, you're connected to him, right? God knows those who trust him. It's not just something that you're doing, but it's something that he's noticing. He knows when people trust him. It's like a light comes on before him. You can have a huge church of thousands of people. But when God looks at that church, he'll see little lights of those who are truly born again and those who trust in him. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible says in Nahum 1.7, the Lord is good. Everyone say, the Lord is good. Lord is good. Turn to your neighbour and say, the Lord is good. Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. If you're trusting him, he knows it. And trust moves God continuously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I say? 
A continual trust in God means that God is continually moving on your behalf. While you're asleep, he's thinking about you. He's moving on your behalf. When you get up in the morning, that's why you can live a life of miracles. That's why you can live a life where the Holy Spirit is actively working and doing things on your behalf. Because he notices you and your trust in him. And putting your faith in the Lord or a constant trust in him means that he's constantly moving on your behalf. But some have a misfounded trust. Ask your neighbour, what are you trusting in? Some people have a misfounded trust. They're, they're thinking, well, so-and-so will help me. Family member will help me. I can rely on the money I've got in the bank. Or some Australians, well, I can rely on the government to help me. And it's a misfounded trust. And when your trust is in something else, some people like, I'm not against doctors, but some people like, the doctor will be able to help me. And their trust has gone astray Onto man. It's a very dangerous thing, if you can hear me right, to trust people. I'm not saying that everyone's not trustworthy, but I'm saying that if you come and if someone comes to me and says, I want to help in the ministry, I'm not trusting you, I'm trusting God that He will take control. And if someone, you know, who gets, gets close to you and then messes you up, you know, and you thought, well, I trusted you. No, you trust the Lord and he's in control. Amen. Never trust people. It can lead to a snare. Always your mind, your heart stayed on him. Hallelujah. Psalm 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Yeah, the Bible says, His works declare that His name is near. And if His works, as He heals the sick, as He delivers those who are demonized, as He heals the people with schizophrenia, if he raises the dead, if his works declare that his name is near, it means that his name is doing the work. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is not a powerless name. For those who trust in the Lord, that name is the access to the power of heaven. Hallelujah. You know, that name is given to us who believe. Let me say it again. That name is given to us who believe. The world might use it as a swear name, but they're just using human language. But to us who believe, that name comes from heaven. And you call upon the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Hallelujah. Someone say, praise the Lord. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have stood. We have risen and stand upright. Praise God. It's a curse to rely on other people. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Whenever you put your trust in someone else or something else, your heart is going astray. I'm talking about a radical trust in Jesus Christ. A radical trust where you're leaning on him all the time. Cursed is a man who trusts in man, makes flesh his strength, whose heart 
departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub. You know, later on it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And then it says, he shall be like a tree. <laughs> so someone who trusts in man is like a shrub in the desert. He shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. When you put your faith in, in someone else, in something else, what happens is you move yourself into the desert place. Why? Because our trust is our divine connection with God. And as you put your trust wholly in him, you come into his abundance, his life, his glory, his anointing, his unction, resurrection life. But those whose heart comes away from the Lord, it's like they shrivel up. The most important thing is your spirit. And those who've got their interest and focus and other things in the Lord, their spirit is shriveled up like a shrub in the desert. But when you put your trust in Jesus Christ, let me tell you, friend, your life comes alive with his resurrection power. Hallelujah. There's nothing like it. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. When you put your faith in someone, something else other than Jesus Christ, that's when your life begins to be robbed by the devil. But I have come, Jesus said, that you might have life and have it even more abundantly. Hallelujah. Like Nora with her new kidney. Hallelujah. Reminds me of a few years ago in Sydney, uh, a pastor was in hospital. Um, I think it was um, had kidney failure and he was really, really sick and uh, couldn't get out of the bed. And a friend of mine, uh, he gave me the phone and said, just pray for him. Pray for him, Mark. And I didn't know that this pastor had done crusades and, and uh, you know, seen mighty miracles and I didn't know anything about him, but he was um, very, very sick. I said to him, Pastor, or whatever his name is, I said, do you believe? Do you believe? Challenging him, that Jesus will heal you. And uh, he said, yes. And the power of God hit that, that, uh, that bed, and he was being fried by the Holy Spirit and uh, came, came to a church a few weeks later where in... Um, prospect in Sydney and, and shared how the Lord set him free but my friend was saying who was at the hospital that he almost got thrown out of the bed, hallelujah there is a life in Jesus Christ that you can connect to simply by continually trusting in Jesus Christ blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose hope is the Lord for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. You want to be in the desert or you want to be in the water? Which spreads out its roots by the river. Turn to your neighbour and say, jump into the river. Come on, let's go. <laughs> spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. Its leaf will, will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. When you trust in the Lord and situations come against you, problems come, there's drought, there's all this stuff going on, you will continue to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Because you have this divine connection with life. Amen. You know, uh, we look at the world and you know, inflation. Look at the world and war and uh, nations rising and so on. But we shall trust in the Lord. He is our rock and we shall be fruitful in this life. You know, you look at real estate problems in Australia with uh, rental problems and people... People can be very worried about the situation, but put, let your mind be stayed on him. Look beyond accommodation. Look beyond and see Jesus Christ, who's the Prince of Peace, who's the eternal God. Hallelujah! You know, uh, 
when you see Jesus in the spirit realm, when you see Jesus, when the Lord permits you to have a vision, your life will never be the same. And I, I remember uh, when I was very sick with cancer, stage four melanoma, and I sat down. Um, actually, this was at you know earlier stages. Anyway, I sat down and in the lounge room, and <laughs> Jesus came. And uh, one of, I think, the only time I saw his face in my life. And I looked at him and then it took me a while to understand what I saw. I saw perfect peace. He was not in the least way worried about me or anything else. He's the Prince of Peace. He, he wasn't worried about anything. It, you know, he looked like he was about 30 years old, young man, and at the same time I knew he was the eternal God. And he wasn't worried about anything. So just stop worrying. Look beyond your circumstances to the eternal peace of God. Hallelujah. So... Do not put your confidence in yourself. Uh, when was it? Two weeks ago, we were in Dundas in Parramatta in Sydney. And uh, one of our, our team, Mark Finch, he, he looked like he, he does a bit of bodybuilding or something or weights or something. He's a strong man, you know. And uh, the power of God came on him and he was on the floor and he was pinned on the floor. And I challenged him, Mark, come on, get off the floor. And I'd come back and I'd challenge him. And he'd really try, you know. It was like he was doing sit-ups. You know, he'd, he'd get a little way and then bang, he'd be on the floor. Someone stronger than him was pinning this young man to the floor and wouldn't let him up. There is someone more capable, stronger and wiser than you are. So why don't you just hand over your problems to him and trust him? Hallelujah. So don't put your confidence in yourself. Why do you boast, Psalm 52.1, why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? Notice it calls him mighty man, you know. The goodness of God endures continually. Hallelujah. You can look, look, look to him. His goodness never changes. If you're on top of the mountain, he's still good. If you're in the valley of the shadow of death, he's still good. That's why you can trust him. He never changes. God shall likewise destroy you talking about this evil man, forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place, uproot, uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him, saying, Here is the man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. When, when people strengthen themselves in themselves, in what they have, in relationships, in their influence and connections and everything, it's wickedness before God. Simple childlike trust is the way that we enter into heaven. Hallelujah. When churches try to be something, someone, you know, and it's like this self-promotion that goes on. What is it before God but a wickedness? What he wants is your love, is your heart, is relationship and simple trust. Hallelujah. Come like a little child. Praise God. Trust means you trust the Lord when you don't understand. When I was 18, I was very close to my dad and he suddenly passed away and died. And such a big grief in my life. And I remember praying, Lord, I don't understand, but I trust you. Trusting God sometimes is like you can't see the way forward in a situation. There seems to be no exit sign out. 
you, your mind can't work it out what to do. Perhaps you feel God is silent about what you should be doing. And then your mind is stayed on him. It's a shocking thing to put your mind on him. Because he comes to you. He knows those who trust in him. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. Think about a blind man who is trusting the person who's leading him. Can't see the way, but he knows that Someone is directing his path. We also sometimes are like the blind man. We don't know exactly where we're going. But there is someone who is our shepherd. His name is Jesus, the bishop of our souls. And he's directing our steps. Isaiah 50 verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servant? Who walks in darkness and has no light? Anyone ever felt like that? You know? Come on, be honest. Who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. When God seems distant, when you can't see the way forward, go deeper. In your trust. Everyone say, go deeper. Put your hand on your chest and say, go deeper. Hallelujah. You know, when you go deeper in your, your trust, you will go deeper in him. When you're full of yourself, God knows you from afar. But when you have a childlike dependence on him, that's when you'll go deeper in him. Hallelujah. Trust him in the problems of life such that you continue to do his will. Satan wants to use problems to distract us from obeying Jesus Christ. Whatever his call upon your life, whatever good he has called you to do, when you have problems, keep doing it. Uh, one thing that really helped me when I was unwell was Jody Olston's book, Healed of Cancer, where she had about six weeks to live from liver cancer, which is a very aggressive cancer. And she said that she continued to do, even though you know she, she had advanced cancer and she was sick and had very little energy, she continued to go out visiting the sick, praying for them, doing pastoral visits. One day they had to move some furniture and her daughter said to her, Mum, you are well. You move the furniture. We're not helping you. And uh, you, you, instead of allowing the problem to dominate your life, you continue to do good, to do his will, to follow Jesus Christ. You just keep going. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things will be yours as well. And the Lord healed Jody, And she's still alive today. That was years and years ago. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Turn to your neighbour and say, don't get stuck in your problems. Keep going. Think about this. Psalm 4 verse 4. Be angry, like, okay, someone's annoying you and you're feeling angry, okay. And do not sin. Don't manifest your anger. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. That's, that's good advice if you're feeling angry. <laughs> Go to bed and be still. Amen? Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. So... Something's upset you, right? What, what are you to do? Offer the sacrifice of righteousness. That means you keep obeying Jesus. You keep doing those sacrifices unto him. 
You keep trusting him. You keep going because you're not going to let life be used by the devil to distract you from following Jesus Christ and doing what he wants. You've only got one life. You've got one purpose. That's to do his will. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, just get on with it. Hallelujah. Stop whinging. Hallelujah. Our trust connects us to divine help. Jesus said, I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so help is released when we trust. When we talk continuously about our problem, behind the problem is the devil. We glorify the devil by focusing on the problem. But when in the midst of our problem, we think about the faithfulness of God and we give testimony and we praise him, then God receives the glory and the devil is shamed. Stop glorifying the devil by talking and focusing on your problem. Amen? Amen. The, Psalm thirty-three twenty. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. You know, there's something special about living by faith. I'm not necessarily saying giving up your job like these guys have. <laughs> well, you didn't have a job, did you, Michael? You just joined us. God bless you. Um, but uh, there's something special about trusting God for everything in life so that when he supplies it, there's great joy, you know. There's testimony. There's something special about trusting him. What a boring life when you just trust yourself and, you know, and well, how boring. Why not just live on the edge? <laughs> Hallelujah. Just live on the edge. Praise God. Shocking, isn't it? Oh, there's so much here. So much. He's a shield to those who trust in him. He's a refuge in the battle. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my, my uh, fortress, my God in him. I will trust. We are blessed when we trust him. He will bring it to pass. You know, the things that you can't do, you trust him. He will do it. And you know, he may even use the strangest people, to bring his purpose to pass. It could be your enemy. It could be someone who's nasty to you. You know, God is amazing. He is so much smarter than we are. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37 verse 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's, let's uh, just close our eyes for a minute. And uh, if a message is spoken to you and you've been, if your trust has been misfounded in yourself or other people, tonight repent because your heart has been astray from God. And tonight put your trust in Jesus Christ, wholly in him. He died on the cross, shed his blood to forgive you, to heal you, to deliver you, to be your God. Come to him, the crucified one who rose from the dead, seated at the right hand of God, almighty God. Let's trust him tonight. Put your focus on him. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, open your heart to him tonight and receive him. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I receive you as my saviour. I put my faith and trust in you. You are my God. And from this day, I vow to follow you and to trust you with my life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You know, uh, I just feel reminded by the Lord to, um, I believe by the Lord, uh, one of the greatest blessings in my life 
was when the Lord showed me my sin. And then I could be free of the slavery of sin through repentance. You know? And so many people, they're not aware of what sin is. Because if you look at the, the world, anything goes. But God's righteous standard, the word of God, has been established in the heavens. It doesn't matter how you interpret it on earth. It's still the righteous standard of God in heaven, established there forever. Amen. So what is sin? Sin is any sexual activity outside of a husband and wife. That's what the Bible teaches. Sin is any involvement in the occult. Sin is visiting spiritualists. Sin is having your, your palms read, iridology, reading of eyes, horoscopes, astrology. Sin is things that you say with your mouth, gossip, lying, deceit, outbursts of anger. Sin is the attitude of the heart, unforgiveness, hatred, resentment, you know, being cold to someone, towards someone. Sin is unbelief. And when we turn from our sin, we can be cleansed by the blood and know that new life in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hello, sir. What's your name? Craig. Craig. Good to meet you, Craig. Likewise. What What do you want from the Lord? Well, I strained my shoulder playing tennis the other day. I'd love that to get restored. Well, let, let's uh, just waiting on the Lord. Mm. Okay. Yeah, just close your eyes, Craig. Father, we rebuke this problem in the shoulder. In Jesus' name. It's a power got on your shoulder. Power got on. Oh, that's nice, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Okay, move your shoulder. Up in the air. Whatever you want to do. What's happening? It's still a bit crunchy. Is there any improvement? <coughs> not, not yet. Yeah, I think of I think of Nora, you know, with needing a new kidney, and we prayed, and then I think it's like almost a year later she gets a, a new kidney. Yeah. Amen. Mm. We'll just pray again. We'll pray more than once. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing upon this man in Jesus' name. So just. When things get going, uh, just leave the catching to the guys with the vests so we don't want anyone getting hurt. You know, we've had people had some bad falls. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise. Isn't the Lord good? Praise the Lord. What do you feel happening, Craig? It's a bit, a bit of electricity flowing through me. <laughs> 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 That's the power of God flowing through your body like electricity, like electricity flowing right through your body, Craig. You know, there's someone far wiser than I am in this room and he is locating people and doing things that he knows what he's up to. <laughs> praise the Lord. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> what was that? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Is this your, your son? Yes, my son. Joshua, can we pray for him? Yes, please. Yeah. What does Joshua need from the Lord? You want to speak? Yeah, I have asthma. Sorry. I have bad asthma. You have bad asthma. You want to get rid of it? Yep. Come on, stand here. Let's pray for Jesus to get rid of it. You ready? Yep. You sure? Yeah, I am. How old are you, Joshua? Twelve. Twelve years old. Right. Give me your hand for a moment. There we go. Just come away from those metal chairs. Praise God. Close your eyes and relax, Joshua. (laughs) 
Take a deep breath in, Joshua. Deep breath. Okay. Yeah. Have another breath. Deep breath. How's that? Yeah, it's good at the moment. What do you mean at the moment? <laughs> well, I'm healed, so. You're healed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. What does mum say? Praise Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? Praise God. You still jerking there, Craig? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> Someone say, Lord, give him more. Give him more, Lord. <laughs> the Lord, you know the purpose of healing, God's purpose in healing is the salvation, restoration and blessing of the heart. He's he just very focused on the heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God heals the body to save the soul. Amen. What do you want from the Lord, Chrissy? Um, I'd like my voice to be restored. Um, since COVID, I've, I can't sing <clears throat> in the same way. Um, I w also would love healing for my wrists and hands and fingers, which I have pain going through. Um, and um, I've also got gallstones and uh, sore shoulder. <laughs> Well, let's go to the root of the problem. Come on, hold my hand. Here we go. It's just a, a spiritual point of contact and the anointing holding people's hands, all right? So when I, I'm blowing, it's not just blowing. I'm attacking the problem. That's, that's what is going on, if you're wondering. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank, that's the power of God on the gallstones in Jesus' mighty name. Power of God going through your body. What's her name again? Christy. 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 Yes, that's the power of God. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. What else did she say was wrong with her? Her voice. Thank you, Lord, for healing on the voice, the voice box. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, that's the power of God going through you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I can see you're a woman of the glory. You, you like the Holy Spirit. Is that right? I do. <laughs> it's like, oh, this one, maybe we're not going to pray about sickness. Maybe we're going to just pray for God to come more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and okay. You know, God sees the hungry ones, you know. <laughs> there we go. That's the power of God on you, sister. <laughs> oh, he's so good. He's so good. That's the power of God healing you, healing your bones, your limbs. Power of God healing you. Praise God. Good to meet you, sir. What would you like Jesus to do for you? Let, let me talk to you first. Yep. So you're appointed. Now, when I say you're appointed, in the church, man appoints people who were never appointed by God. But there is appointment from God where God selects people. In the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit selected missionaries. The Holy Spirit selected pastors. You've been appointed, spiritually appointed by God. Yeah, that's right. I feel like I'm not doing it, that I'm held back because of physical things. And I've, I feel like, um, how can I pray for healing for others and for people to come to Christ when my body's so wrecked? Jody Alstein. Yeah. You know, our calling doesn't dep depend on how we're feeling. Uh, look at the life of Paul. <laughs> yeah, how many times you've been shipwrecked? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 
often go back to that verse about a thorn in my side. And, um, so the prophecy is that you have been appointed. I see an anointing that has been given to you. And whether you turn to the left or to the right, that induction, that appointment, that anointing, that call of God is on your life. Hebrews 13, the call and gift of God are irrevocable, unchanging. It is always upon you. Yeah, I can, every time I step out of the house, I see someone and I can't help but think about them and pray for them. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So, a few problems around you. <laughs> problems. That's the power of God going on the, on the woman. Power of God on the woman. Power of God on the woman. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's the power of God going through her. Going through her. It's like the Lord is shaking off the problems around her. Shaking off the problems around her. Power of God, it's like a bubble all around her, the power of God all around her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we just need God to give us a shake, you know, and so that we can put our mind on him, you know. Turn to your neighbour and say, just shake off the problems. Give them a good Holy Spirit shake. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Caroline, what do you need from the Lord? Um, I need help. Oh, well, I think I need deliverance from the spirit of offence. I get angry really quickly and easily. And your health? Uh, um, yes, I've got lymphedema and knee problems. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty for pulling down strongholds. And Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. How are you doing? I feel great. What was the problem? Um, lymph, lymph something? Lymphedema. Come, come, come. So what else did you have? Um, uh, knees. Um, arthritis in both knees. and. Okay, move them. <coughs> What's happening? I feel great. What's that? They feel great. Well, come on. You better try out. Watch, watch Karen's hand. You better try out your new knees. Come on, you better jump up and down like this. And... What I couldn't do was get down on my knees. Sorry? I couldn't get down on my knees and get back up. You couldn't no. get down. Well, try it again. It's a new thing. Try out those new knees. Wow. Well, I couldn't do this. Sorry? I couldn't do this before. You couldn't do it. Yeah. What do you think about that? <laughs> It's great. It's and how did the lymphs, oedema or something affect you? Um, it's swelling. So I've got swelling all over my... You had? St yes, I did have. Had. Yeah, because check yourself out. But yes, my, These jeans were really tight around my neck. Sorry? They were really tight. Okay, and now? The, the baggy. They're getting baggy? Yes. yes. <laughs> they are. Yes. Is that amazing? <laughs> it's incredible. I haven't processed it, but it's incredible. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is crazy. That's amazing. These were really tight down on my legs. I believe you. Oh, oh my gosh, look at them. They're... You're shrinking. I, I am. <laughs> yes. This is incredible. Oh my gosh. It's called Jesus. Have some more of his love and power. Um, oh, g'day. My name's Robert. How are you? Oh, I'm here. You're free, sir? Yeah. Yep, I'm free. What did you feel happen? I can't even explain it quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey? Eh? It's a first. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the last time, too. You're free of that. Macular degeneration in my left eye. 
Oh, back again to Neil. Yeah, lower back. I was uh, injured years ago. It's given me grief all week. So I'm seeing like a trauma injury to the lower back, Neil. Yeah. Yeah, when I was about eight, anyway, I fell off a truck. It's been hounding me all my, most of my life. Let's hold him up. It's the power of God going through the disc. Power of God going through the disc. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hey? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, it's going well. I'm free and getting free. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, my body, just, I'm just sort of shaking at the moment. <laughs> What's your name again? Sula. Sula. Yes. What's it about in one sentence? Jesus healed me. Okay, so what was the problem? I had neck and back problems and I couldn't sit still. So you couldn't sit still because of the neck and back problems, right? So how long do you have this for? A very long time. Years? Or? Yes. And, and do you know how it started? or? Um, Did the doctors say anything? They've said a lot of things. <laughs> what did they say? Come on, let's hear the doctor jargon. Uh, basically, the, uh, it was a trauma and uh, maybe I pulled the muscle. Um, the injury kept moving, or the pain, I should say, kept moving from you know, place to place. So they couldn't tell me exactly what the issue was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when did the Lord touch you and heal you? Today. Tonight. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Power God's strong up here. Do you feel that? It's like difficult to stand. Do you feel that? Yes, I do. What does that feel like? Great. Hey? So how did it affect you, this injury, this trauma? In a lot of ways. Um, my activity was always very limited and I was always uh, cautious with everything that I was doing. So now I can sit in the chair and I've got no crunching. I'm comfortable. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so show us what you can do now. <coughs> what can't you do, huh? Well, someone give Jesus a clap. Who healed you? Jesus. Jesus did. Praise God. Have some more. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, thank you. Remember, he's always focused on the soul. He wants to give you joy and peace and love and forgiveness and wholeness. Amen. I've gone through a lot of trauma and depression and suicide attempts in my life. And Thank you, Lord. I praise God. We had a good night last night. Um, is Sarah and is it Matthew? Tell us what happened in Campbelltown. Um, we went for the two nights, went for prayer. I got, you got called out. Um, and I went out the front and got prayer for a thyroid nodule. And I went on the floor and three hours later, got totally healed of emotional, just a lot of stuff in my heart. I didn't actually know at the time all the things it was, but sort of time went on. I realised how many things God had done. Um, yeah, so just... What, what was happening for three hours? Just so much power. I couldn't move. I couldn't get up. Yeah, the prayer team had to pray for me to move, so they <laughs> lifted me up. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, it's just fire. Just power, power. Yeah. Awesome. So now once the Lord healed your heart, what, what do you think was the problem? What was the things that was going through your heart? 
I just think a lot of just things that have happened in my life, just emotions, fear, anxiety, negativity was a big one. I just, as time's gone, I just realised how much that was affecting me. Yeah, just a lot more positive for life and, yeah, just awesome. Shall we hear from uh, your husband? Yep. So uh, on the same meeting, um, sorry, the night before that Sarah got called out, I got located by the Holy Spirit and um, Mark asked me what was wrong with me and I said I had, um, at the time, hemochromatosis. So it's high iron in the blood. So if it's untreated, it would affect my organs when I get older. So the only way to treat it would be to give blood. Um, I did that for about, I think, almost three years, giving blood on and off to the Red Cross. And yeah, I had a, a phobia of needles, so I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, when I got called out, got prayer, um, Mark said, yep, it's gone. And then after that... So what did you, did you feel anything happen? Um, I felt heat all over my body, like like heat through my, almost like blood in a way. So, yeah, through my body and bones and everything. Wow. Who healed you? Jesus. So what happened after prayer? After prayer, we went back home and I just felt different. Like before, when I wouldn't give blood for a while, I felt like I was running on adrenaline and I'd have a massive low when I got home from work and um, that all changed and didn't happen anymore. I didn't have to give blood anymore. I believe I'm healed and, yeah, I'm fine. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Bless you guys. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else want to share? Hello, what's your name? Trish. Trish. What's it about? Healing, deliverance? I had um, back, lower back pain and hip pains and this hip for three weeks I couldn't barely move. I was just so, so tired. And throughout the meeting it kept getting looser and looser. When I got home, completely... When, when, when was this? Last night. Last night? Yeah. Are you ready for your miracle? I'm ready for my miracle. What's the problem? Uh, I always have lower back pain and at the moment this hip is really tight. So I suffer from lower back pain and hip problems. Okay, move your leg. Come for a walk. Off you go. Just give it a good workout. How's that? Yeah, a little bit looser. Mm. Completely healed when I got home. And then when I woke up this morning, I, I had to go to work and stand all day. And perfect. It was just wonderful. Mm. So I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. Can I pray for you, sir? Come on. Thank you for the honour of letting me pray for you. Don't look at the light, just look at me. So what's your name? Steve. Steve. What would you like from the Lord, Steve? Um, just to grow. Sometimes the Lord doesn't want me to talk. Hallelujah. Can we pray for your daughter? What's your daughter's name? Tia. Tia. Hello, Tia. What, what does she need from the Lord? She can tell you. Wish to get baptised. Uh, baptised in the Holy Spirit? Yeah. You have a dad? Mark obviously gave some good words about being childlike, but um, my daughter's been asking me for about six months since we baptised a local petrol station attendant in our swimming pool. She's realised, and then she started repeating to me when reading Bible stories at night, she's like, you know, Dad, if I don't get baptised, I won't meet the Lord in the air or, you know, et cetera. Like she just instinctively knew, I think I need to be born again. So Tia, Jesus is laying hands on you. <laughs> All right. There he is. Do you see him yet? You don't see him. He's laying hands. He loves you. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for Tia. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he's right here close. If you don't see him, it's okay. But he's right, standing right here in front of you. He loves you. And that's his hug. That's his love hugging you. Do you feel it in your heart yet? What does that feel like? I don't know. 
<laughs> it feels good? Yeah. That's the love of God. But hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's the love of God. You know, it goes in like a treasure. It just stays there forever. Amen. Amen. Is that nice? Yeah. God bless you. Praise God. What's your name? Ariani. Welcome. What would you like Jesus? Let's is this your mum? Yeah. Come on, mum. What does your daughter need? Um I don't know, healing in her skin. She suffers from eczema sometimes, yeah. Yeah. And from yeah, just traumas and stuff that's happened in her life. <laughs> yeah. So let's believe for this eczema to go. Okay, the skin condition. That's the power of God coming on you. Power of God coming on you. We command the eczema, the skin condition, to come out and never to return. Loose your hold from her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And now we're going to pray for the soul. So um, maybe something to do with the dad, but something's there. So mum, she, um, she, 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 turn, she kind of flips in, in her soul. She flips, she, she changes, and suddenly there's a hardness, a hard nature about it. Is that right? Yeah. And do you know why she does that? Rejection. Not really. So the reason why she would turn, the reason why you would turn into something hard, right, unloving, is because you experienced a lack of love and part of your heart had gone hard. But now God is softening, softening, softening your heart. Do you feel that? What do you feel? Like a tingle and like a softening pressing on my skin. You feel a softening pressing onto your skin. So, some, so with this girl, the what she experienced brought damage to the soul and like scarring, it hardened it. And that's why she'd click into quite a, a hard or aggressive person. But that's gone now. God's healed your soul. Okay? Okay. All right, bless you. What's happening to mum? Let's, let's talk to mum. What's happening, mum? Just um, feeling joy and... Um just really grateful to Jesus for everything. Yeah. Really grateful. Do you read you read your Bible with your daughter? I do, yeah. I'm seeing you sitting on the edge of her bed <laughs> reading the Bible with her. We do. Every night. Almost, almost every night we do. And so I'm sitting, seeing you sitting on the edge of the bed reading the Bible with her and I'm seeing Jesus sitting on the other side uh, and he's listening to the Bible study. He's listening, and he's he's listening to it, and he's he's just participating. This is Trudy. Judy, Trudy. Yes. Oh, where's Mav? That's the other one. Oh, there's Mav, Trudy, and Mav. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's pray for you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's fire all over you, Trudy. That's fire all over you. That's fire all over you, Trudy. Hello? Hello. Have some more. Michael. 
Michael, what would you like from, from Jesus? Probably other underlying issues that go right back. I've been considering it since last night, but uh, I do have you know physiological things that have been with me a long time. Uh, spinal. Well, I just feel to pray for you. Okay, you've been like <laughs> located by the Lord. So what's what's happening here? What do you feel happening? Not much. <laughs> I'm trying to get my arms up. They're not going anywhere. But... You can't get up. You want to try to get up? Is that the best you can do? Try again. It's the weight of his glory. Lord, just press down some more. Just press down some more on him. In Jesus. Holy Spirit, we honour you. We honour you. We honour you. And the Lord said, I'd, I would do it to all of them if they'd let me. <laughs> I'd do it to all of you, I, I believe the Lord's saying. Are you going to try to get up again? I've been having a little few efforts. So I can go a little bit. But... You sound a little drunk, sir. I feel a little drunk. <laughs> Might have to carry him, Michael, to the car. <laughs> What do you say about that? I think we lost one of the catches. Come on, Renee. What's happening, Renee? What's happening? Come over here in the prayer. There you go. What's happening? Oh, it's really warm and hot and furry, fuzzy. Furry? Hot. <laughs> That's fire, Renee. I see fire all over you, Renee. That's fire. 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 You can't escape that, Renee. You're running as much as you want, but that fire's on you. Fire's all over you, Renee. Karen, just put your hand on her head for a moment. That's what, There's fire on your, on your hand. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lord. How are you doing? Some more. <laughs> you know, the breakthrough is the easy part. Hello. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, the glory of God. <laughs> Where does she go? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> what do you want me to say? Oh, you were here last night, weren't you? Yeah, what happened last night? Well, he, he sat through the whole meeting tonight. So. What was the problem with your little boy? He couldn't stand the Holy Spirit and the presence of a Oh, I remember. Yeah. Come up. Yeah. He, he had an allergic reaction to God. Hi, um, my son is tormented. He can't stand the presence of the Lord. He can't stay in worship. He, he just can't stand it. And he loves music. Hello, Elijah. You want to use my microphone and say hello? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Lord, for this boy. We command this spirit to loose your hold from him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we command the Spirit, loose your hold from him. I believe he's free. And he's been in the meeting, no problems? Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. What is going on here? Just leave her, I think. Just leave her. This is very interesting. <laughs> I was just getting up. <laughs> oh, no. I know. I well, why do you want to get up for? Ah. See you later. Are you a little bit drunk on your feet? Such peace. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Mm, I'll just find a chair. <laughs> what are you shaking for? Uh, just Jesus. It's just, I just can't help it right now. <laughs> Have some more. More. Yes, Lord. To him who has will be given even more abundantly. More, Lord. More, Lord. Fill him, Lord. You'll never be the same again, sir. Have an encounter with Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. You'll never be the same. Praise God. The Lord's making a missionary preacher here. Missionary preacher. What's your name? Susie. Susie, have some. Oh. <laughs> Do you suffer anxiety bouts sometimes? Oh, I'm even clinically diagnosed and what do you call it? Uh, got a script for exactly that as we speak. Yeah. You want to be free of that? It's plagued me a long time. Uh, I said you want to be free of it. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Sounds like the man of the pool, Bethesda. Jesus asked, do you want to be made well? He said, I've been here a long time. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to go have an easier life. Be free of it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Loose your grip. Come out. In Jesus' name. Loose your grip and come out of him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You're free. How are you feeling now, sir? I feel great. I feel lighter. I feel better. But can I be bold enough to ask? I'd actually love the Lord to heal my um, right hip. Like, um, So I believe you were healed of that anxiety. I feel great. Like, yeah, I, I just didn't feel myself for such a long time. And How many years? Uh, a decade or two. Like, and the others around me really notice it puts others on edge. Where's your wife? Uh, behind you right now. When he would get these anxiety attacks, it really affected you? Very. That's... So Avis, mm. be healed. <laughs> In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's it leaving you. That's it leaving you. That's it leaving you. Stage two, spiritual surgery. You're being set free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Loose your hold from her. Get out. There it goes. There it goes. You're free. Avis, what do you feel happening? feel my heart's gone really fast and the heat on my, over my head. You've been set free. So what's wrong with your hip? Um, yeah, x-rays would suggest it's just completely shot. So I played tennis at a high level, similar to Leighton Hewitt, Andy Murray. It wears your hips. Kelly, you've been located by the Holy Spirit to pray for this man's hip. You ready? Yeah, right okay, and what's the problem with it? It's deteriorated in the hip. Exactly. It's deteriorated. Very warning. Hmm. Okay. Kelly, just take your left foot and put it on his foot without crushing his foot. On top of it. That's the power of God going through your hip. Now, Kelly, in your heart, believe.
Can't believe you're okay. What's your name? Uh, Robert. Okay, move your leg, your hip. Feels good. It's, it's, yeah. You had pain before? Oh, the pain was very acute previously. It's now about 50% gone. And this range of motion here is quite more than, whoa, hang on. That's, yeah, that already feels about 50% better. So the healing went up into the bone, but the top of it, is still under the, still Lord's doing surgery up, up yeah. top of the femur. Yeah. Now just touch his foot again with your left foot. Okay, hop up, hop up. Okay, go and jump or do something. You're fine now. Don't go away. Just. No, I couldn't do that before. That, that's that's a big improvement, and yeah, I can feel there's a surgery going on here. Like there's there's stuff moving and moving. It's this is yeah, praise the Lord. Like Robert, who healed you? Uh, Jesus did. You were going to have a hip replacement or something, were you? Um, yeah, it's booked in uh, in about three weeks' time or something. But, yeah, I now see as my unbelief to, to do that. There's yeah, no need. So, move it. How's that? It's getting better again. There's just a little bit of tightness in the groin. But the thing with these hips is when they calcify, they don't move. So, just the fact that hip's moving now, that in itself... Is this a new dance move? <laughs> <laughs> you want to... I'm not sure if I can get that one right. Show me how that one goes. <laughs> you might laugh. I haven't done that in years. This is the curse of the hips. Like, I haven't been... Your hip is blessed. My hip is blessed. I confess that. You having fun tonight? Yes. What, what are you enjoying? The power of God. <laughs> we'll have some. <laughs> what are you feeling? Peace. Everyone say, have some more. Have some more. Drink up. <laughs> What's your name? Avis. Avis? Okay, Avis. I really, really want to say thank you, Jesus, and because I got, I sat free from yesterday, you prayed for me, and I felt really, really good. Good, and I had a dream last night about my mum passed away six, seven months ago, and that's that was the first time I dream of her last night. She was happy, so I because I wasn't able to go home to see he see her, and so you're the one who received the prophecy about. The altar sacrifice, is that right? And generational curse. And the Lord set you free last night. Aphis, what do you need from the Lord? Um, I need the emotion healing and the anger problem and, and the generation curse, maybe. Yeah. From my mom and dad's generation, they've been worshipping. So you're talking to me, and I see. When at the time of your birth, they sacrificed to the altar. Yeah. We break the covenant. We break the covenant, the blood covenant. We break it. We break the blood covenant. Command the idle spirit to come out in Jesus name we break the blood covenant of the mother and the father we break the blood covenant in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you Lord it's coming out it's coming out what do you, what do you feel happening I feel heat in my body and shaking it's the power of Jesus Christ delivering you yes thank God and I feel I appreciate you. Yeah, that power inside my body was real. And I felt that 
I was shaking, I, I felt the electricity all over my body and I felt the heat and everything. And I... So... So, um, let's talk a bit more. When he would get these anxiety attacks, it really affected you? Very. That's... So, Avis, be healed. <laughs> In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's it leaving you. That's it leaving you. That's it leaving you. Stage two, spiritual surgery. You're being set free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Loose your hold from her. Get out. There it goes. There it goes. You're free. Hallelujah. Kiero, is it? You know, some people are like they stand like a tree, you know, like, but they're actually receiving, you know. What the, the time that I most realized that was when some, a group of indigenous singers came to our church in Paraguay and we prayed for them and it didn't seem like anything happened and they went back to their tribe and revival fell. Hours and hours of meetings, one after another, six hours, you know, people going into trances. And I went out to, to visit them. But it didn't seem like anything happened, but she's receiving an impartation. It started, um, there's, something happened last night, and she's receiving an impartation from God. And her life will never be the same again. Amen, Pastor Paul. <laughs> Does Sarah want to sing, does she? If the Lord permits. name of Jesus Christ be delivered Taylor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be delivered be free in Jesus mighty name 